Hey there, kids. Welcome to another math video. <clears throat> this one is for grade five Eureka Math, lesson eight, oh, module three, lesson eight, homework. And so hopefully you have completed all your homework and you watch the problem set video and you're ready to go and you know what you're doing and everything is ready to be checked. So at the bottom of the page, we have the strategy for the day or the objective, which is to add fractions to and subtract fractions from whole numbers using equivalents and the number line as strategies. But uh, with the strategy of the number line, um, it then says in the directions, add or subtract. So I'm not going to force you to do any one thing. If you're in my class, uh, I will just recommend doing what you think is best for you. And so some students love the number lines and other students really love the equivalents. So uh, for number one, we've got our, or for A, we've got our three plus one and one fourth. So just a quick little number line to check. If you always start at your zero and you say, okay, I'm adding my three here easy enough. You don't always have to write, I mean, look, who wants to make a number line with 100? I don't. So uh, so you can just make one hop with your whole number uh, for 3. Now, when you add 1 and 1 fourth more, the detail comes when you have your whole number and then you're past that. So I don't really expect you to fraction everything off until you're between the two whole numbers. That's where the making the numbers on the number line can really help you. That four and one fourth right here, that last little plus one fourth, that's where you're going to um, find your answer. Okay, so three plus one, these are so easy. It's like kindergarten math, three plus one, well, it's four and a fourth because we're adding on. So the adding problems on the left side, not super challenging, not gonna lie. It's the subtraction ones that will, will really benefit from the use of the number lines. So let's hop over to B. I'll show you what I'm talking about using a number line starting at two. Okay, now let's have one and zero. If you don't have one, you could make one on your paper. When you start at two, and you take away one. Here's my first subtraction, but I have more. Remember that your strategy is subtract the whole and then subtract more. And so we're continuing to move down the number line. Just how far down? We're looking at the numerator and we're trying to recognize how many pieces. I've got eighths here. And so you really just want to complete the whole. There's a great strategy, teachers, if you're watching this for help, there's a great strategy. Uh, it's a fluency practice. Have the students count to complete the whole. So if I said one and five eighths, the students would say three eighths to complete the whole. So it's really about knowing how many are between this and eight eighths. And so when, we, when kids know that, it helps them to know what the answer will be when they have to keep subtracting. So from here, we've subtracted one but we now need to take away five eighths more. So one, two, three, four, five puts you right here at the three eighths, which is what I was just talking about, trying to understand how to complete the whole. So the answer is not one and three eighths. The answer is three eighths. You've already gone below the whole number one when you subtract. So that's what the big help is with the number line. You keep going, okay? You keep going in a negative direction when you subtract. So keep going, take the whole number, then take the fraction that you have. So this is the minus 5 eighths part here. So now that you've seen that, I won't use the number line for the addition because it's so much easier to just do the whole numbers. 5 plus 2 is 7, and look, we have five-fifths or fifths and fifths on uh, our denominators here. So you can have just two plus three is five. Now if I have seven plus five-fifths, that's equal to one. So eight is your answer for this one. It's just an easy whole number. Uh, subtraction, make a number line. Use that strategy. If you want to uh, have everything labeled, Start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
only do the whole numbers until you get to the fractional section where, um, where it really kind of matters. Okay, so 4 minus 2, starting at 4 and taking away the 2. But continue by subtracting 5 sevenths. So in between 1 and 2, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is the seventh section. That's the part that's going to throw most people off is how many little tick marks do I make? You're going to make six marks because there are seven sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sections, six tick marks. We're going to take away five of those seven. One, two, three, four, five. Landing here. You're past the one. So if you look at your 4 minus 2, that gives you 2. But it's 2 minus 5 sevenths. So I'm actually going below the 2 to the 1. When you start taking away less than 1, you'll have a number that is just below the whole number. Just below the whole number. When you have just below the whole number and, and it's 1, it'll be a fraction all by itself with no whole number. Okay, so this one is going to be at, these are sevenths, and this is one seventh, and that's two sevenths. And you don't have to label everything, because that would be tedious and cumbersome. Okay, so addition, super easy. Seven plus eight is 15, plus the four fifths, and that one's even easier than the one above. There's nothing left to do. It's 15 and four fifths. Very simple. Uh, 18 minus 15 and 3 fourths. Okay, if you have 18 minus 15, look at the whole, that's going to be 3. You then have to take away 3 fourths. So now, look at your number line. If I'm between 2 and 3, okay, and I'm at 3, and I have to take away 3 fourths, split it into 4 sections, 1, 2, 3, what would this be? it would be two and a fourth, okay? Know what the number is that's gonna be the whole, it'll be one less than this one, and know how to close out that whole by finding the numerator that will complete the whole here. So three plus one makes four, that completes the whole, two and a fourth is your answer. 16 plus 18, if you have to regroup and you're worried about forgetting or uh, not sure, just move those over and make it easy for yourself. Uh, 8 and 6 is 14. Don't forget to regroup. So we have our 34, but we're also adding the 5 sixths. Again, you don't even need a number line. That would be a waste of your time. Just write your final mixed number right there. Uh, the hardest part here would be making sure you add those correctly. Now 100 minus 50. Just do it and then subtract 3 eighths. If you really want to work on a number line, go between 50 and 49. How many sections should we break it into? The denominator tells you eight sections. That one's not in the middle, but that's okay. Sort of, okay. So uh, if we're gonna take away 3 eighths, it's gonna be a one, two, three. It's actually gonna land on this one. So how many eighths did we go forward? If this is one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, this is where you can spend the time labeling and building your number line so you can understand what's happening. If you take away three, you should be at five because five plus three makes eight. So where are you on the number line? You're at 49. Remember, it'll be one less than that. Whatever it takes to complete the whole, out of eight, and that's where we are, 49 and 5 eighths. Okay, Whew. I hope you got it. Hope you're getting it, because now we're on the word problems. That was fast, right? Okay, the total length of two ribbons is 13 meters. This is blurry and it bothers me, but there we go. If one ribbon is seven and 5 eighths meters long, what is the length of the other ribbon? Okay, this is a classic tape diagram. The length of two ribbons is 13 meters. One of them is seven and five eighths meters, question mark about the other one. So uh, tape diagrams can help you show parts, 
and the hole. This also can say, hey, guess what? If I have the hole and I am missing a part, that's a subtraction problem, which tells me I can subtract the whole numbers first. 13 minus 7 is 6. Then take away what's left. 6 minus 5 eighths. Again, if you want to use a number line, you can. We're going to go to the next number below 6, which is 5. Complete the whole, which is 3. Use the label. That is meters. And so 5 and 3 eighths meters is the other ribbon. Wasn't that easy? Isn't this great? Aren't they fun? You know it's fun. Okay. It took Sandy two hours to jog 13 miles. She ran seven and a half miles in the first hour. How far did she run during the second hour? Again, you could use a tape diagram. You could break it into two even parts being the two hours. 13 miles is the total that she ran. In the first hour, she ran seven and a half miles. And then how many miles did she run during the second hour? Same thing as the top. We know the total. We know one part. We're just missing, so missing this other part. So if you find the difference and subtract the whole numbers first, then continue subtracting the rest of this and you do it in a separate problem, it's so easy. The next number below six is five and complete the whole. A half plus a half is a whole. So she ran five and a half miles in the second hour. Yay, so hopefully you got that one right. And I hope the tape diagrams help you see the parts in the hole. And I hope you click subscribe and come back again on another video. And I hope these are helpful to you. Okay, last one. Uh, Andre says that five and three fourths plus two and one fourth equals seven and a half. Because seven and four eighths equals seven and a half. Well, seven and four eighths does equal uh, seven and a half, so this is true. But there is a mistake here. Draw a picture to prove that he's wrong. A picture will be the number line. So um, Let's take a look at what we have. We have our five and three fourths. You should write it and two and one fourth and you should do the work yourself. Now the, the addition ones were so easy. Five plus two is seven. Now take what's left and add it. Take what's left and add it. Being sure to add because we have to add all parts of the first to all parts of the second. Now look at this. They both have common denominators and 3 plus 1 makes 4 fourths, which we could then combine with the 7 because 4 fourths is really what? It's 1. So 7 plus 1 is 8. So the problem is that when Andre looked at the 3 fourths and the 1 fourth, perhaps he subtracted and got 3 minus 1. Not really sure how he got the 7 and a half unless he did three minus one right there and got two fourths and then simplified it without showing any work. Um, we've got work here, seven and four eighths that he could have simplified. But again, shouldn't have been done because three plus one is four and this makes a whole. So lots of different problems going on there. Uh, and the picture that you can draw is with the number line. And you can show the holes at the same time and the fractions, or you can show each one separately. So um, since we know we have to get up to eight, I would just do the full uh, number line and label everything because we're only talking about fourths anyway. So it was zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I would do my five and three fourths. So zero plus five. If you wanted to break it up here and do the three fourths, you could start from here. And then plus two and a fourth. Now, at this point, if I was to add two, when I'm at five and three fourths, then I would go to six and three fourths. 
and seven and three fourths to get the full two. That's right here. But then I also have to have one more fourth. Boop. And that's where you'll end up at your eight. So that's proving it right there with your number line with all the little fractional units and the holes. Here's your plus five. Here's your plus two. Here's your three fourths. Here's your one fourth. So you're putting it all together, continuing to move in a positive direction. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Nice and short. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.